Good morning, welcome back to the 120th. Uh, today we are changing the foam around the focusing screen and under the mirror on a Bronica S2A. Uh, same applies for a Bronica S2 and an EC I think as well, I'm not sure, maybe the Bronica S, C, D, whichever ones have this focusing problem. It's a bit unusual for my channel to do a how-to. I don't normally do how-tos because I don't normally know how to do things. I'm normally making it up as I go along. But I've done this fix six or seven times now uh, successfully. So I'm content to give you a step-by-step. -step. This is a Bronica S2A. Um, it's new to me, or fairly new to me. It does have the problem. When I point out the window, look at something really far away, uh, bring the focusing all the way to the end of the focus, things far away are not in focus. Now, I've talked about this a lot on the channel. You could take a look at the other videos where I talk about Bronica focusing. It's a problem and it needs fixing because it is not just infinity, which is off. If infinity is off, everything else is off as well. So, first things first with this foam fix. The most important thing is this is an easy job. You can do it. You can do this at home with minimal tools. Here's what you're gonna need. Firstly, you're gonna need your Bronica. Uh, next, you're going to need a set of screwdrivers, preferably Japanese screwdrivers, or what's called JIS screwdrivers. Uh, with all your Japanese cameras, the screws on them are made to fit a certain type of screwdriver, and that's these the, the, the Japanese industrial standard screwdrivers. All the screws you're going to be undoing to do this fix are flathead screwdrivers, they're not crosshead screwdrivers, um, and it's less of a problem. Uh, for these ones. The, the crosshead or uh, Phillips style Western uh, screws are different in shape and depth to JIS crosshead screws um, and therefore there is a risk that you're not going to get good purchase on them and that you can you can strip the heads of those tiny screws. The next thing you're going to need is foam, replacement foam. Um, I would recommend self-adhesive foam, foam with a sticky backing. A question that gets asked pretty often is what is the right thickness of this foam? Now, there's a range. So essentially what's going to happen to this foam is it's going to go in between pieces of the camera and it, that you're then going to screw those pieces of the camera to a stop, which means that if it's too thin, that is a problem. If it's too thick, within reason, it's not a problem because what it'll do is it'll compress down. That's kind of the point. I am going with this foam and it is, it's about 2.2 mil, 2.2 mil thick. So we've got a foam, we've got our screwdrivers. I would recommend a couple of pieces of um, kitchen tissue, um, not tissue that you blow your nose on because that breaks up and puts dust everywhere, especially not toilet roll, that's the worst. Um, but just a bit of tissue just to put stuff. Um, you are gonna need cleaning stuff, um, so whether that's some, some alcohol or alcohol wipes. And then the other thing which I think is really useful for this type of repair is um, something non-metal to poke and lift and, and kind of you know feel your way around with. Um, I actually use, for lots of different things, I use knitting needles, plastic knitting needles that I've cut in half um, so that they're, they're, I can use them to kind of maneuver my way around. Metal will scratch stuff. If you watched um, the video of me doing this for the first time, you'll see me pick up the, the fr Fresnel, Fresnel, I'm gonna call it Fresnel, so just get comfortable with that for the rest of this video. Um, you'll see me picking up the Fresnel with a pair of tweezers and putting a massive scratch in it. So now I use plastic, things to, to move things around. Um, <clears throat> right, let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take off whatever you've got on the top, whether it's a waist level finder, a prism finder, chimney finder, um, or loop finder, this one's called. And the way you do it is this clip here. Um, and we're gonna get our nails underneath it and pull it up. And it doesn't take much, it just pops off, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the lens off. Um, because we're going to want to get at the mirror. I'm going to leave the back on for the duration of this. And the reason for that is that inside here is um, the shutter curtain. And that is a fairly sensitive bit of the camera, um, which I don't want to break. I don't want to push out of alignment. So this, the, there's, there's no film in here. I'm just leaving this on to protect the shutter curtain and protect the back of the camera. So, but the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the lens off. Um, we wanna take off the lens and the uh, focusing helicoid. We're gonna 
push this button here and we're going to twist until, until you reach the end and then we're going to lift that out. Okay, right then. So now we have available to us the uh, mirror and the ground glass, which you can now see. The mirror foam is simple, just some pads under the mirror. But I want to explain to you what the ground glass foam looks like and what you can expect. So in this crude animation, which I'm very proud of, uh, we're looking at the side of the camera. The winder is here, the lens is here. If we make those disappear, we have the camera box. Imagine, if you will, that I've cut it in half. At the top, there are two frames, an upper one and a lower one. The Fresnel is going to sit on the lower one. The ground glass is going to sit on the upper one. The ground glass with the rough side facing down must sit perfectly flush against the outer frame in order to get accurate focus. In order to pin that ground glass down, there are strips of foam above it and a frame that screws down onto the strips of foam. What causes the focus problem is that there are two springs under the Fresnel pushing upwards to keep the Fresnel in contact with the ground glass. And if the foam holding the glass down degrades, the ground glass lifts from the outer frame and we get focus problems. So what we're going to do is take the frame off, replace the foam, and then put it all back together again. Now, we're going to take off the top frame and remove the ground glass before we do the mirror foam fix. And the reason for that uh, is that it's much easier to get at. So you are going to remove four screws. One, two, three, four. I have actually, um, I have read online people doing this without taking off all four screws. They just take off the, the, the front two and they kind of pull it out from underneath this, this rear bracket. And you'll see that these screws don't go through a hole. They go through sort of little notches. I'll show you in a minute. Um, but I'm gonna take out all four because I think it's uh, better practice. I'm gonna take the uh, rear most of them off first. This looks like someone's had a go at this before actually. This is a fairly common issue with old cameras that other people have worked on them at some point, done a bad job and left you to pick up the pieces. These screws won't move and there's a real risk of snapping the screw heads off completely and then you really are in trouble. So I'm going to leave them in place because I do have the option of leaving the screws in place and still being able to get the ground glass out. I don't know what's happened here. I'll have to have a closer look once I get further in. But someone has absolutely shredded these screws. So let's go with the front ones. Let's do, let's do the, um, the, the method I don't normally use, which is to take these two front screws off. One. And there's the other one coming out without any trouble at all. You should now be able to lift this up. Right then, and we are in. Right, as I wasn't able to show you the rear screws on that camera, I'm gonna take the frame off my other S2A, uh, where I know the screws aren't shredded. I've taken the front two off already. These rear ones come off a lot more easily than on the other camera. Once you've got both screws undone, you can lift off the metal bar, which acts as a plate to hold the frame down. It also has two tabs for the waist level finder or prism finder or whatever you've got on it. I'm lifting this one off with the screws still in it. You don't have to, you can take the screws out wherever you want to do. Underneath you'll find two bits on each side, a thin washer, and under that there's a thicker washer or a spacer. Take both of these out, make sure you don't lose them, then you'll be able to lift the whole frame off and get access to the ground glass. As you'll see, the condition of this one is a lot better than the one we're working on. So here we are, and this is what we can see now. This is the Fresnel. Don't touch it with your metal pokey things. Here is your foam that is all broken down and gungy. There is more foam stuck here, which is actually on the, this has actually been redone. This is not the original foam from the, uh, that, that Bronica put on here, um, because there was a lot more of it, but it's, it's obviously was done quite a long time ago and it is gungy. So, uh, I'm going to push on this. Take a note. First of all, shiny side, matte side. So it is matte side down. Now, if I give this a push, this is basically, big, there we go. All right, so that is the Gunji foam. So we're going to need to clean all of this foam off uh, before we put this back together again. But the thing to note there was shiny side up, matte side down. Fresnel was um, up. You shouldn't really touch this with your fingers because in theory your the grease of your hands will get underneath it. Right, so this is what we can now see here. So we've got a lot of foam around the edges. Um, we have uh, these springs here, 
What you will also notice is that there's an outer frame here and here and a slightly kind of inner frame and the, the Fresnel sits in the inner frame and the ground glass sits on the outer frame. Anyway, we'll, 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 we'll clean that up in a minute. First thing we're gonna do, look at the state of that mirror. That is awful, isn't it? In this camera, and in all in, in a lot of uh, cameras, the mirrors are what's called front side mirrors. So the mirror in your bathroom, the shiny surface is on the back. So you've got a piece of glass, shiny surface on the back. So when you see your reflection in the mirror in the bathroom, you're looking through the glass, it is being reflected back through the glass at you. So you can polish the, the glass on the front of that, no problem. The, the mirrors inside these cameras, shiny surface is delicate and it's really easy to scratch, which is why you shouldn't really go in and clean these things. All right, let's just take a quick look under this mirror. So we're gonna go in here, we are gonna unscrew this one and this one. Now, you do not need to unscrew the top two. Once you have unscrewed the bottom two, that whole panel will hinge upwards and will click at the top. Specifically, it's, it's been designed for this purpose, so. And that's coming away pretty easily. And that one's out as well. Right then, now once those two are out, should just lift. So the whole mirror doesn't come up, the frame comes up. And you can push that all the way to the top there, like you can see, so that's all the way up there. Now we can lift out the mirror. There it is, okay, so there's the mirror. So let's take that mirror out, being very careful with it. Inside here, this is what we find. So we've got a long, thin strip of foam at the bottom and two squares of foam at the top. I'll show you from here. Long, thin strip of foam at the bottom, two squares of foam at the top. So we're gonna put a little bit of tissue down here like so, to try and stop this, um, the foam. And then we're gonna scrape downwards like this. Okay. So I have a, a tiny drop of alcohol on a Q-tip. Try and get the last few bits of uh, adhesive off. All right, those top two bits are probably clean enough now. Let's focus on the bottom bit. Flakes off with with ease. So right now we're going to lift this out with all our All right, it's not perfect, but I'm content that it's, it's ready for some for some new foam. Right then, I've already cut some foam. I've just followed the exact size and shape of what was already there. So I've got two sort of L-shaped bits for the top. You don't actually need L shapes; just squares will do fine. Uh, I have a thin strip for the bottom, the same length and width as what was already there. Make sure you don't stick the foam over the screw holes on either side. You'll need to be able to get at them to put it all back together. Now we're going to replace the mirror. So it goes fat end at the top. Let me pull the frame down from here where it's been sitting. And then we're going to screw it back down again. And that is now pretty solid. Next job, so we're going to get another bit of tissue. And we are going to put that down and we're going to stand this on the front and we're going to scrape away all of this gooey mucky stuff. So. Let's just do a quick once over with some alcohol as well. It's always a good idea to give the whole thing a damn good clean while we're in here. Let's move this out of the way for now, because this is going to go everywhere. It's actually coming away quite cleanly, which is good. I'm going to clean this with a bit of alcohol again just to get all the muck off so that the new foam will stick properly. Now we're going to cut some foam. So it doesn't need much. So what we'll do, 
Let's cut this to about there. Then we're going to cut some thin strips. One, two, three. The fourth one needs to be thin. There we go. I'm going to put foam on all sides of the frame, but you don't need to. Just left and right will do the job, or three sides, or whatever you want. Once again, avoid covering screw holes. There we go. New foam on. It's not perfect, but it doesn't matter. When the foam deteriorates, it gets sticky, and this foam is as well stuck to the glass as it was to the frame. Once again, some gentle scraping, followed by alcohol to get it all off. Uh, I'm now going to go and wash the ground glass and the Fresnel in just um, soapy water. One last thing I'm going to do before I clean the ground glass and the Fresnel is I'm just going to push these springs up. Push these springs up to make sure they've got plenty of spring in them. Right then, uh, these are now clean. So let's put this back together. So first things first, we're going to put the Fresnel in. So the and the, the Fresnel part of it, the um, concentric circles goes upwards. You'll see when you push down on it, it sits, presses on the springs, and it sits in that little hollow. So that's lined up. We are now going to take the ground glass. That's the that's the rough side, that side there. So that's going to go down. And that's just square, so it doesn't matter which way around that goes. So that, that ground glass is now in place. Right, I think what I'm going to do is put a glove on. So I'm going to take the frame and I'm going to put my fingers through it to press that down. So there we go, that's got it. All right. So there we go, the fix worked, the camera is now focusing to infinity, I'm very happy with it. Um, it's been about a week since I uh, did that fix and in the meantime I went out, to, I took the camera out to the workshop outside uh, and I got stuck into those screws on the back of the frame, the ones that you don't really need to take out but you kind of should in order for it all to go back together, you know, securely. And I managed to get them out eventually and they were super glued. Someone had super glued them, somebody else had gone in and, 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 and almost stripped the top of the screws trying to get past the super glue and so I had to cut new grooves in there and then and, and and use a pair of pliers and get really put really quite a lot of pressure on it um, I was genuinely concerned and I was really kind of anxious that I was going to uh, potentially strip the heads of the screws or potentially even take the screw head straight off that's you know it's a possibility fortunately I was able to do it with enough pressure and kind of gradual, gradually adding pressure, and they started to move. They kind of started grinding, um, and, and, and you hear the kind of snapping and crumbling of super glue on the threads. Um, but I just can't fathom why somebody would do that. Why put super glue on screws? It's just the dumbest thing you can possibly do. You're essentially committing that, that, those screws into position for eternity. Anyway, long story short, I got them out, I've replaced the screws, here they are, oh, here we go, that one and that one, they're the new screws. That's it for today, I hope you found this helpful, again it's another one of my niche interest videos that if you have a Bronico S2A that has a focus problem then this video is going to be invaluable to you. And if you don't have a Bronico S2A, which let's face it is is almost everybody in the world, um, then it's going to be dull as shit. So, sorry about that. You shouldn't have watched it. So that's it. Uh, more exciting stuff coming up on the channel. Uh, so don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, we've got reviews, how-tos, fixes, uh, you name it, all coming up pretty soon. I will leave you with one important message. Don't super glue screws. I believe I have to tell you that. Bye.